Good morning. Welcome to worship. Happy first Sunday in Advent here at Seven Locks Baptist Church. We're delighted to have you worship with us today. I want to say hello to everyone who is with us in the sanctuary this morning. Those who are with us worshiping around the world, all of our friends. We just found out today that not only do we have people watching us in Africa and in Pakistan, but now we have people all the way in Taiwan worshiping with us on Sunday mornings. And so that is exciting. We want to say hello to all of you. It's Sunday afternoon there, but we're great to have you worshiping with us wherever you are today. As we begin our time of celebration of the Advent season, we invite you to stand with us today as we sing together. Our first song this morning is hymn number 77, Come Thou Long Expected Jesus. Is this all? So please stand and join us. one through six praise the Lord my soul all my, my all my inmost being praise his holy body Ugh. praise his holy name praise the Lord my soul and forget not all his benefits who forgives all your sins and heals all your diseases who redeems your life from the pit and crowns you with love and compassion who satisfies your desires with good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. The Lord works righteousness and justice for all the oppressed. Our next song is Glory in the Highest, so please stand and join us.
I invite you to join me in prayer now and in just a moment as this is our very first Advent Sunday and as soon as I finish praying we're gonna I'm gonna invite Susie Hahn to come and light our hope kins today this is our Sunday all about hope as we finish the time of Thanksgiving it's appropriate that hope and thanksgiving coincide with one another because as we give thanks, as Hortense said last week, we remember all that we've been through this past year, all that God has brought us through. It gives us hope that if God has been with us in the past, that whatever we are facing now and whatever uncertainties lie ahead, we have the hope that God is with us always. So at this time, and in that, with that in mind, join me in prayer. Lord God, we love you. We thank you for Jesus. We thank you. For the hope that you bring. God, we thank you that as we reflect on this past year and we think about all of the ways that you have shown up, all of the things that shouldn't have fallen into place except for the fact that they have because you were involved. God, we thank you for that. We thank you for the ways that you tell us you love us every day, even if it's a beautiful sunrise before a rainy day. God, Father, we thank you. We bring glory to you because that's the place where it belongs. And so, God, as we continue to worship today, we pray you would speak to our hearts now. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And now at this time, I'm going to invite uh, Hortense, one of our, Hortense Grounds, one of our deacons, uh, to come and bless our offering. We want to remind you that we receive our offerings and tithes uh, three different ways here at Seven Locks. If you would like to make a physical gift, you may place it in the wooden box marked tithes and offerings on your left-hand side as you exit. Uh, you can always mail in your gift to our church office mailbox, or you can go online to sevenlocksbaptist.org and click the gift tile and give through PayPal. However you do that, I want you to know that, that your gifts, they don't go in vain because they go to so much more than, than just a place to worship, although we have to have that. You're partnering with us to tell people about Jesus. And it's amazing to find out more and more. We want to reach the Montgomery County area. That's our heart. That's where we are. We want to reach our area in this weird place between Potomac, Rockville, North Potomac, whatever it is. We are geographically. We are here because we love Jesus and we love the people here and our hearts are breaking for them. But again today, I am astounded and I give thanks. We have a visitor who used to live here who now is coming to us all the way from Taiwan saying, I'm watching you there and worshiping with you there. So you need to know that... The ministry that we have here is touching the lives of people across the globe. And so we thank you for your participation in that. We thank you for your love and support because we're a family, we're a team. Not only do we give together, we serve together, but we love together. And that love, that fellowship that started here at 11845 on Seven Locks Road is now going across the globe. And so we give thanks to God for that. And at this time, I'm going to invite Hortense to come and offer our blessing. Good morning. Good, morning. Good, morning. Good morning. Let us pray. Our gracious Heavenly Father, we've come again to say thank you. We've come to bring before you, Lord, that which you have given us so generously. Our tithes, our offerings, our gifts, we bring it before you. We ask you to bless it, Lord. But Father, most importantly, we bring ourselves the vessels that you have framed for this earth realm, we bring these vessels back to you. Father, you've given us talents and abilities according to your gracious way of giving. We use these every day, Lord, in different capacities. We bring those to you this morning, Lord. We ask you to bless. Father, we've come to the last month in the year and we're about to enter December. 
Every Sunday we come here, Lord, different from different backgrounds, different professions. We come into this place, Lord, and offer ourselves to you. And Lord, as we enter into December, it is you, Lord. You have blessed us. I pray for those in here, Father, the doctors, the lawyers, the medical professionals, the teachers, the corporate executives, Lord. I pray for employers, employees. I pray, Father, for everyone who is using the talents you've given them in whatever way, Lord. Father, may we finish strong as we finish 2022, as we go into December. You say we have not because we ask not. We're asking you that everybody sitting here, Lord, will finish strong, will do what's required of them. We pray that you will send supernatural strength, supernatural ability, that you will provide miracles. There's some here, Lord, who pay other salaries. Father, provide everything that's needed so that seven lakhs members and all associated with us will finish strong, Lord. And we will do well to come back and give you all the glory for all the wonderful things you are doing in our lives. Take our talents now, Lord, perfect it for your pleasure and for your will. We bless your name this morning and we shout hallelujah. We give you praise. Thank you, Lord. Help us to finish strong. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Our next song this morning is Emmanuel Hallowood Manger Ground, so please stand and join us.
Baptist Church. I invite you to open your copy of scripture with me to 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. And we're going to be reading together verses 16 through 24. I invite you to follow along on the screen or in your own copy of scripture as we read together 1 Thessalonians 5, 16 through 24. Rejoice always. Pray continually. Give thanks in all circumstances. For this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Do not quench the spirit. Do not treat prophecies with contempt, but test them all. Hold on to what is good and reject what is evil. Let's pray together. Lord God, we love you. We thank you that as we come together this first Sunday in Advent, as we celebrate hope, as we are polishing off the leftovers of Thanksgiving. God, I pray that the one thing that would go with us into the Advent season and through the rest, really for the rest of our lives, is that spirit of of thankfulness, thanksgiving, hope, of rejoicing. God, that comes to us through an attitude and a heart of prayer. Speak to our hearts now. Challenge us in this way. We love you and we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. One of the guys that I like to watch on YouTube for inspiration in terms of learning different things for guitar always says one important thing. He's this... I think the guy still lives in the 1970s. I'm not sure. He's a big Steely Dan fan. But one of the things he always says is learn to master the simple things. Start with the basics. Get a hold on those things. And grow from there. Because he always says every single musician that you are amazed by, whatever instrument, it does not matter. They all started in the same place. And that's with the basics, with the fundamentals. And they learn to master those basic things. And so many of the things that you marvel at, if you really knew what they were doing, you go, oh, really? That's it? You're like, yeah, it's start there and go on. And that is essentially what Paul is doing here as he closes out his letter in 1 Thessalonians. Some scholars have even said it's almost like as he's finishing the letter, he's just, you know, almost like a cannon, just rapid fire peppering the Thessalon- the church in Thessalonica with all of these different little, short little things. Hey, don't forget this, and don't forget that, and don't forget that. It's like when you're either about to go to the grocery store, and you've got your list, and you have a habit of leaving your list, and, and, or it disappears, or people steal it from you because there are pickpockets who steal grocery lists. So you get asked time after time after time, do you have the list? To the point that you have to provide photographic evidence. You know, it's almost like that that's what Paul is doing. Hey, hey, don't forget these things. But really, what he's doing is laying this foundation. He's saying this, this is a core thing. These are parting words. This is a final benediction, so to speak. But in the middle of that, He is giving the church in Thessalonica this foundation on which they are to live their lives and who they are to be. So let's dive back into that this morning and and see what Paul would say to us through these very same words. He says, rejoice in the Lord always. Let me say this again. Rejoice. Rejoice, rejoice, rejoice. Pray continually. Pray without ceasing. Give thanks in all circumstances. Wherever you find yourself. For you know that this is God's will for you. 
Don't quench the Holy Spirit when the Spirit is speaking. Don't, don't scoff at what someone might be saying to you or whether it's a message presented in, in a time of worship or a, a word timely spoken to you, even if you do not like what someone is telling you. Don't silence them. Listen to what they have to say and then pray about it. And if it's good, apply it to your life. And if you feel like that's not for you, then let it go. Don't, don't, but whatever you do, cling to what is good and let go of what is evil. So, this passage, they, they, they seem like real short, random, rapid fire things. But in it, Paul is presenting a lifestyle of thankfulness. They are some very basic things. And you, you don't think about this much, but anytime you are learning something new, you have to start with the basics. Now, all of us, when we learned how to speak our native language, we learned from listening to others around us, right? When, when you're a year old, how do you learn language? You don't learn it from a book. It's not like, okay, on your first birthday, uh, with our kids, we celebrated by giving them chocolate because it was the first time they could ever really have chocolate, right? And so we have the picture of the kids going after a, a tiny little chocolate cake or a cookie or something like that. And, and because it's a, it's a milestone. Nowhere in there did we give them a grammar book. You know, when they're learning mama, dad, dad, it's like, all right, all right, now let's talk about syntax and let's talk about sentence structure and fragments and, and word placement. We don't do that. When you learn a basic language, you learn it from listening and responding. Now, when you go to another, if you're learning a second language or you're learning a, a, any kind of discipline, that's when you go to basics. And later, as you're in school, that's when you learn, if you're talking about your, your native tongue, for my, in my experience, or from my perspective, it was English, they start teaching all the finer points of grammar. And then they introduced me to this awful little thing. It's a little half semicircle that I was told is a comma. I'll be 43 years old in nine days. I don't know what those commas are for. And if you've ever read any of my writing or edited, people will go, uh-huh, he doesn't know what to do with those. I don't know why they're end of sentences, but sometimes they are. But that's when we learn the finer points, and, and that's when we get into these deep details. But what Paul is doing here for the church in Thessalonica, they are baby Christians. They are a young church. They are just learning how to live and how to speak and how to be followers of Christ. So he's not getting into these complex things, and they, these may seem like random little statements to us, but he is speaking as a parent speaks to their children, and they're learning the language of faith. So that they can learn and communicate. Now, my favorite thing in the world is to watch toddlers talk to each other. Have you ever seen it? It's the most hilarious thing in the world. I have no idea what they're saying. Because it sounds like neep-nop, neep-nop, neep -nop to me. But if you watch a group of toddlers, three-year-olds, they're all neep-nop, neep-nop, neep -nop to each other. And they're all, uh-huh, uh-huh. And then they go do something. Like, what is this secret language? They get it. They can communicate. And that's what Paul is trying to do for them is to equip them with the basic understanding of who they are and then to go speak it to others around them. And it has some impact. So what are these things, what are these foundational things that he's teaching them? Because these are not, these are not platitudes. He is not giving them what looks like a set of rules because here's the guy, Paul, who has established a lifetime of ministry as a former Pharisee, or a Pharisee in recovery, however you want to say that, of saying, hey, the law does not save you. Great faith and grace do. Faith in Christ and receiving the grace that has been given to you by the sacrifice of Jesus, that's what makes you right with God. But as he's closing out this letter, here are these statements that seem a lot like commands. Is he giving them a new set of rules? No. He's providing for them a foundation for a lifestyle of thankfulness, but honestly, a lifestyle of worship. You know, we talk about worship a lot, right? You know, and, and we're actually sitting in a, in a time, in an hour, 
that we set aside a week or more than that if God moves that we call worship. But by no means is this hour supposed to be the only time that we are ever engaged in worshiping God. And the amazing thing about worship is that it looks different for all of us. People worship in different ways. We worship in song. We worship by hearing the word of God preached. We worship in prayer, through giving our tithes and offerings, serving. Uh, there are people who worship on Sunday mornings at the very front in the foyer by saying, Hi, welcome to Seven Locks Baptist Church. That is a form of worship. We worship with our instruments. We worship in a lot of different ways. And the amazing thing about us is it looks differently in everybody's life. But there's a basic place in which we begin that place of worship. And it's with these verses in 1 Thessalonians 5 where Paul says, first and foremost, rejoice in the Lord always. And I will, other translations say it this way, but I will say it again, rejoice. He repeats himself. Now, you might think that Paul is writing to a church that has not been through any you know, trouble. They, they, their life is good. No, it's not. They, the church in Thessalonica, they faced hardships. They faced difficulty. Being a, a follower of Jesus in the first century is a difficult proposition in a thousand different ways, especially if you are a Gentile. If you are a craftsman that is coming out of some kind of guild where you were a part of worship of some form of deity as the patron saint of your guild. If all of a sudden you're not going to whatever temple to eat the food that's sacrificed to idols because you don't believe that that's okay. Before too long, your livelihood is in jeopardy. And, and this is a reality that Christians across the Roman Empire faced in the first century. So they, they've faced issues. There, there have been riots. There have been all kinds of different things that have, the church in Thessalonica has faced. And yet Paul says to them, Rejoice in the Lord always. And I'll say again, rejoice. It's easy to rejoice when things are going well, when life is great, when life is easy. In 2022, it's a lot easier to say rejoice in the Lord always, and I'll say it again, rejoice, to see the looks of everybody's faces. I'm like, oh yeah, yeah, I can do that. Go back two years. This was a look I saw sometimes, if, if you heard that. Or really, that's some of what I saw. But Paul is saying, have this, this spirit of rejoicing, whatever season of life you're in. Why is that? Well, this is hard to say, and it's hard to hear, because we face whatever crisis that we're, we're in, and look, there's always something, right? Right? It always seems to happen right around Christmas, too. The brakes squeak, uh, the roof leaks, you know, uh, etc. You know, the vet decides that the dog needs nine shots instead of five this time, or the dog decides to eat something that it never has before, and why would think today was the day to eat a crayon? But it did. You ever had that experience of some form or fashion? Or the, you know... Squirrels chewed your power cord in the garage, even that. That's a very serious thing for God. We prize those power cords. Um, but it, it's hard to say thank you, God, when, when, when somebody brings you a plate in three pieces, right? A lot easier when life is going good and you're sitting down at Thanksgiving and there's a big giant turkey and there's nine different forms of carbohydrates all within arm reach. Easy to say thank you, God, on that day. A little bit harder in a couple of weeks when it's cold outside. Colder than it is right now. I do not rejoice in the Lord always, and I'll say it again, rejoice when it's four degrees. That does not bless my soul. But Paul is saying that wherever you are, whatever place you're at, to find a, something to give thanks for, because the truth of the matter is, there is something to say thank you to God for, regardless of what we're facing. And I don't mean that as a platitude. I mean that as a real deep-seated spiritual truth. And this may sound kind of pat, but wherever we are, whatever we are facing, we can give thanks for the fact that there's a God in heaven who loves us. And he's not just in heaven. When we trust in Jesus Christ, 
and we ask Him to forgive our sins, and we express belief that He is the Son of God and that He gave His life for us on the cross and rose again three days later, God sends His Holy Spirit to live within our hearts. Therefore, whatever we are facing, however bad it is or however good it is, we're not alone. We can give thanks for that. We can give thanks on rainy days like today. Before it rained, and I don't know, it was between 6 and 7 this morning, almost 7 o'clock, I looked out of the windows. And there, just above the tree line, is this beautiful line of pink with a blue sky above it. And I thought, you know, that's pretty cool, God. Thanks. Because it's going to rain all day, and cold rain is not my favorite thing. It's not like I wake up like, yay, cold rain, let's party, right? But you look out at the sky and you see that beautiful, I mean, I, I don't know anybody who could paint like that. Bob Ross and all of his amazingness, and Bob Ross is the greatest artist known to man, in my estimation, because of happy little trees. Bob Ross couldn't have imagined what I saw this morning. And there's joy in painting, but it's because God's the painter. And that's what I'm talking about. When Paul says, look, what I'm talking about is a lifestyle of worship. It's not just a time where you go and worship. It's that your life is an offering, is a time of worship to God. And granted, that's a struggle for all of us. I get it. Paul is saying, live in such a way that you find joy. December is probably the busiest month of the year. At least it is for our family. But we find joy. We, we strive to find joy. You know, there's so many opportunities to see people that you haven't seen or do things you haven't done for a year. And, and it, it, it's terrible that people like us and they want to be with us, right? That's a terrible thing. We find joy in that. It's a lot easier to do that than to find joy at the person who does not know how to use a blinker. I get it, but... Thank you, God, there's not nine of them. There's only one in any trip, right? But it's trying to, to hold on to those pieces of joy. That's what Paul is saying. We can wake up every day, even if we're in the worst circumstances that we have ever faced, and we feel like on a scale of nine to ten, whatever crisis we're in is a 95. Paul is saying, find joy, because it's there. Because joy gives way to hope. Hope carries us through. That's why it says, have an attitude of prayer. You know, the, the verse that I've seen in, I don't know, 20 years of ministry, 16 or 17 now as a senior pastor, you want to know the verse that I've seen cause more panic attacks than any other on the faces of people when I share? Pray continually. Pray without ceasing. People have no idea what it means. And for the longest time, I'll confess to you, I didn't either. But what is Paul talking about here? If we're talking about a foundation and a lifestyle of worship, it is impossible to pray actively as we would think of prayer. You know, around the table in our time of Bible study or worship or, or, or in a corporate setting, to pray 24 hours a day might be a stretch. I know people that pray for four or five hours at a time. But to think that that's something that we do all the time, that's a challenge to say, never stop praying. That, that, that causes people to panic, well, well, but i got to pay the bills and i got to do this. But what Paul is talking about here is having an attitude of prayer. Yes, it's, it, that doesn't discredit or, or take away from the fact that there needs to be those concentra concentrated times where we get away and we pray along with God and we pray with our families that we come together as a church family and we pray. Definitely those times. But we have... A life that is an attitude of prayer. That as we face different things that come our way. And okay. You just opened an envelope. And you did not enjoy what was inside. You just heard some, someone told you something. You did not particularly want to hear. You saw a headline that you did not want to see. Whatever it would be. Could be something good. Okay. God, thank you. Or, okay, God, we're going to have a talk about this later. Or, or, God, what do I say in this moment when you need 
that word, it's that attitude in the heart of praying without ceasing. Knowing that God, as we have that openness to hear what God is saying to us, because prayer is not simply our concentrated effort of what we say to God, but it's a listening. We often think that prayer is just a one way, that it's a monologue. That's not necessarily a biblical concept. It's a dialogue. When you think about one of the most famous prayers of all, Jesus' prayer in the Garden of Gethsemane, Father, if it is your will, let this cup pass from me. But if it's not, if this is your will, then let your will be done in my life. All we hear is Jesus' side of that prayer. But do not kid yourselves. He is not the only one talking in that garden at night. And anytime we are praying, anytime we are worshiping, that's why I always say at the end when we have our time of invitation, as the Spirit is speaking and has spoken, because I'm not under any illusion that I'm the only one talking or that I'm the one that the words come from my own heart, but they come from God's Spirit speaking to me. But He doesn't just use my voice. So I understand when we talk about prayer, or praying without ceasing or praying continually, it's not just what we say, but it's attuning our hearts to listen to what God is saying throughout our daily beats and our routines. Because when we do that, this is what gives us the ability to give thanks in all circumstances. Knowing that that's God's will for us. It's God's will for us to be thankful, to be joyful. And that's not, I did not say it's always easy. And joy is not the same thing as being happy, right? Because there are some days that are just not happy days. And it, it is okay to be upset. It's okay to cry. Jesus got mad. Jesus cried. That means, guys, we can do that. That is okay. It is human emotion, right? But as we pass through that, we have a joy that is almost like an inner peace that says, okay, we're in a place where we are finding joy around us because God is good. We're in this attitude in prayer. We can give thanks in all circumstances because we know that, that if we are giving thanks that our hands are open, we're saying, God, thank you. We don't have our fists balled up like we're, you know, uh, in a, a defensive position from God or other people, but it's a place of going through life with open hands so that we can give thanks to God and we can receive what He gives us and also give freely to others and receive freely from others. That's God's will for us. That's what opens doors. That's what, what, what when people around us see us speaking this language of grace and of prayer and of thanksgiving, it's what gives them pause to go, wait a minute. What is it that is going on in their lives that's not happening in mine? And it gives us an opportunity to share that. And we hear a lot of things. So that, He goes on further, but the last one that I thought tied in here is he says, okay, use discernment, use wisdom, seek God, test the Spirit, don't quench the Spirit of God as God is, is speaking to your life as you through you and to you, in this attitude of worship. Don't quench what he's trying to say in your heart. But test the spirits. What he says by that is, is pray about it. Okay, you hear, we hear a lot of different things from a lot of different directions every day. But God, in God's word, the scripture is where we hang, hang, where we base our life around. We don't worship the book. We worship the God who's revealed through it. But scripture opens the door for us to commune with the Holy Spirit because it is the only living book. This is the book we, we know that we can come to time and time again because it is true. But there are other voices that speak and God, God moves in other ways and they're, they're the forces of evil also speak in other ways too. And that's why Paul says, the Holy Spirit has been given to you. Allow it to speak in your heart and test what is being said. If it's good, hold on to it. If it's not, let it go. This is, a, this is a, a, a great struggle we have in food ministry because sometimes we have to use a lot of discernment when it comes to apples and avocados and other things because at, at about 12.30 it's my inclination to let it go. 
If it has one spot and the people who know me at that time, and there are some now I've made disciples of. They weren't disciples of my method before. Others will never be. And, and But, you know, we agree to disagree that I think that, hey, after a, an apple has nine holes in it, it's time to let it go. But um, there's some discernment about it. If it's good, hold on to it with, with dear life. If it's not, discard it. You don't have to get angry about it. You don't have to be upset. Uh, because people, people talk to us all day long, right? There are people that care about us who, when, when they feel like there's something God has laid on their heart, they're going to share it with us. And they love us enough to say it, even if we don't always want to hear what they have to say. That's something we should hold on to. Sometimes there are people who are having a bad day. And they need someone to have a bad day with or to wars or act. And in those moments, we have to pray and go, wait a minute, is this about me? And if, it's, if it is, okay, well then let's, let's go through the whole biblical process of working stuff out. And if it's not, just kind of let it roll off the top like the rain is rolling off the top of the roof right now. Okay, test the spirit. If it's good, hold tight to it. If it's not, let it go. And the same with the things that, that we uh, put in our lives. If it's good, cling to it for dear life. There are things worth fighting for. There are things that are not. Let that go. But all of these things provide for us a foundation of a lifestyle of thankfulness and worship. This is a primer. And it all leads to hope. And hope gives life. Hope gives us the strength to keep going. That, that's what we celebrate during Advent is the birth of Christ is not simply uh, this is Jesus' birthday so we stop and we, we, we say happy birthday to Jesus. No, the hope that, that the significance of, of Jesus' birth is that God said this is the point in time where I'm going to redeem humanity. To say to humanity all that I've do, been doing up to this point was to get to this point where I could send my son to this earth being fully human and fully God to live a sinless life, to love you, to teach you, to, to model for you the way that human beings were created to live and, and to be in community with one another, to give his life and rise again to know that what is in Jesus, that change can begin to happen in you, to know that you're not alone with the struggles that you face in life, for whatever that may be, that we have hope knowing that God has intervened in human history. And if He's done it once, He's going to do it again. Because we already have a lot of history between then and now to say there have been so many times where God has worked. And if that is who God is, that that's a pattern that paints a picture of a character. Of a God who loves and intervenes. And it is through this foundation that Paul gives us of rejoicing, of praying constantly, having this heart and attitude of prayer to speak and to listen to the voice of God, to give thanks, to allow the Holy Spirit to, to direct us in our life in the many ways that we need that direction and wisdom. And to discard the things that need to be discarded. That brings us to hope. That gives us the ability to speak that language. The language that the world needs to hear. People need Jesus. They need kindness. They need grace. It starts with a simple word. You know, we, we were traveling the other day. And I simply said to people, hey, how you doing? People, you know, TSA agents, the, these kind of people, uh, you know, bag of channelers, I can, hey, thank you, how you doing? Do you know that, that at least twice somebody said, wow, thanks for asking, I'm doing great. You'd be amazed when, when you have that attitude, a uh, uh, lifestyle of thankfulness, of worship, you understand that, that God created you, He created other humans. It changes how you treat them, how, how you respond to them. It's not perfect. It is messy I, for all of us. And we know that. But I'm going to tell you that it opens doors for people to find faith, to find peace, and to find the same hope that we have. So let us seek to model that lifestyle of thankfulness. Allow it to take root in our hearts into an attitude of worship as we walk daily with the one who gives us hope, Jesus.
Let's pray. Father God, we love you. We thank you that you are the source of our hope and our joy and our peace. And it is in you that we live and move and have our being. God, we thank you for the many blessings that you have given us, the ones that we know about, the ones, God, that honestly we, we take for granted and we overlook. God, would you help us to have that attitude of thankfulness in our hearts, that, that attitude that rejoices, that prays constantly, that tests the spirits, that gives thanks in all circumstances, knowing that that's your will for us, to find joy in the midst of the crazy, in the midst of the crisis, to find joy, Lord, in times of peace, knowing that we didn't make it happen in our lives, that you did. We love you and we ask this in Jesus' name. We want to thank you uh, that as we think about this time now of thankfulness, thanking God, we enter into a time of invitation. I'd say to you this. Has there been that moment in your life when, when you encountered Jesus and you, you said, I need that relationship. I need that grace. I need that forgiveness. I want the Holy Spirit's presence working in my heart. If you would be here today and say, I've, I've never done that. I've never uh, given my heart to Christ. I, I've never uh, begun to follow Him. Maybe you don't even really, those are kind of church you tell me, but maybe God is speaking to your heart and you know you need to do something today, but you're not entirely sure what to do. I invite you to, to come down front and let me share some more with you. Let me tell you how Jesus has changed my life and how He can change yours. could be today that you're here and you know Jesus I want to encourage you and invite you again into that lifestyle of thankfulness and of worship. To think about the, these little things that Paul has said. Rejoice in the Lord always. Pray continually. Give thanks in all circumstances. What does that mean to you? What is God saying to you in these things? And don't quench the Spirit as He speaks today to you. I want you to think about those things. And if there's something you need to respond in prayer, come down front and let's pray together. It could be that, that there's another need that's weighing on you like a lead balloon and you need to lay it before God's feet today. I invite you to do that at your pews. I invite you to come pray with me. Let's talk about it. Let's agree about it in prayer together. It could be that God is leading you to, to come forward for baptism or God is leading you to come and be a part of our church family. Uh, maybe you would like some more clarification of how we do that. I'd be happy to share with you. Whatever need that you feel weighing on your heart today as the Holy Spirit continues to speak. I invite you to respond now. Let's stand together. Our invitation hymn for today is hymn 89, O Come All Ye Faithful.
At this time, I want to invite Brian and Kathy Turner to come. Uh, they've come today. They've been, most of you might have met the Turners. They've been worshiping with us now for a few months. Uh, they come today uh, saying they'd like to come and be a part of our church family and join Seven Rocks Baptist Church on Saving the Church. So uh, if you would receive them, would you please say amen? Amen. 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 So I am going to invite the Turners. They are going to be in the foyer in just a moment at the close of the service. Uh, please uh, come by and say hello to them as they go. And Hortense, would you be willing to open the door and escort them out? Thank you so much. All right, you guys want to go there now. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, announcements. So on Friday, December 2nd at 6.30 p.m., we'll have our, we're going to go to Brookside Gardens for the evening. We still have two tickets available. Cost is $5 per person. Please see Alma Morton for more information. Gingerbread House decorating is on Sunday, December 4th at 4 p.m. Everyone is invited. There's a sign-up sheet in the foyer. Um, in the foyer, we have some books of Advent reading. You're, able, you're allowed to take some home for um, your daily devotions. And we're still collecting $25 gift cards for Safeway and Giant or monetary donations for our food, Christmas food for our food ministry families. Place your gift cards in the offering box or designate your monetary gift to Christmas food collection. And we're collecting children's PJs and socks for Stepping Stones Shelter at Rockville. Any new or gently used scarves, hats, gloves, and mittens will be used to decorate our Christmas tree out in the foyer. And finally, Lindsay is in need of STEM classroom items. There's a list of needed <coughs> items in the bulletin. And there'll be a box in the foyer next week. Um, for our closing, did you have any? Okay, our closing hymn today, we're going to be singing, during Advent, we're going to be singing one verse of O Come, O Come, Emmanuel. So we'll be singing the first verse today. So please stand and join us. <laughs> 